Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Church of Christ here at Washington Avenue. And we are our visitors. You're especially welcome. We thank you for coming, and we invite you to come back as often as you have opportunity to do so. We want you to know that you're our honored guest. If you are visiting, uh, we ask that you fill out an attendance card and place it in the collection basket or leave it in the seat there and someone will pick it up a little later. We want to remind everyone to turn off your cell phone so as not to interrupt uh, our worship. As far as announcements are concerned, we have uh, a number of those that are on the prayer list. And you'll find that list um, in the uh, bulletin. And uh, we need to look it over and, and be mindful to pray for each one on there. But I have here um, three or four that uh, that uh, needs to be needs to be remembered. Uh, Clara Edwards uh, is doing better after her fall, but uh, we need to pray for her, as well as Shelley Bowman, who is uh, doing well following her surgery. Also, Kevin McKenzie will have a, will have several uh, procedures over the next few weeks, and we should be praying for him as well. Also, there's um, a note here to keep Sherry Payne's husband Brent in our prayers. He has uh, he has his first scan since having an eye removed due to cancer. Uh, and that'll be happening Wednesday, that scan, so we need to pray for a good report uh, on him. There will be a congregational get-together at the Wickline Farm on July 30th. There are more details in the bulletin. Our gospel meeting will be August the 5th and the 6th this year. A two-day meeting, there'll be one uh, lesson presented on Friday evening at 7 o'clock, and uh, on Saturday, it's set up like a lectureship. There'll be four, uh, four different uh, speakers speaking, and um, I believe that begins at 10 o'clock um, on, on Saturday, with lunch being served at noon. We want to all make plans to attend and support that great effort. Lamech Joel, a preacher from Kenya, he wants to thank the congregation for the support we send him. And Brooke Murray would like to thank the congregation for supporting her on a mission trip as well. One other note here I, I failed to see, as I was mentioning the sick, uh, Dolores Harless, Harless uh, is ill and she's at home, so we want to remember her in our prayers as well. One other note here, I have um, an announcement uh, that needs to be made concerning extra dishes and utensils that have been collected um, downstairs um, in the kitchen over the years and, and uh, medical equipment such as walkers, uh, crutches and wheelchairs which have been stored in other rooms in the basement. These items have been sorted and, and uh, moved to the, what's called the big room where they will be made available to the public um, at the next clothing giveaway on July 23rd. However, if you've donated any of these things to the church, you would like to have them back, please remove them as soon as possible. Starting today, members who would like any of these items are welcome to look through them and to take them with them. After the July the 23rd, all items that there are remaining will be either donated to charity or otherwise disposed of. That's all the announcements I have. We'll be led in singing this evening by Brother Rick McCormick. So. first song this evening will be number 390. 
we have an anchor. For those of you who are just using the book, we'll omit stanza three. 390. Will your anchor hold in the storms of For our scripture reading opening prayer, we'll sing number 680, The Old Rugged Cross. And again, if you're using the book, we omit stanza three. <clears throat> the Old Rugged Cross, 680.
I hope your Bible says that John, 1 John 5, 1, 5, 1 John 5, 1, 5. It reads, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born God, and everyone who loves him will for God also love him. Who is for God of him, by his will know that we love children of God. When we love God, we'll keep his commandment. For he is the love of God that keeps keeps his commandment, and his commandment is also not burdensome. Forever, forever, the born of God overcomes the world, and his is a victory that overcomes the world. Our faith, who is, and who come, overcomes the world, but who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Let us go to God in prayer. My Father, we thank you for this day, another time that we have to come together to worship you, to sing songs of praise, and make our petitions known unto you. Father, we thank you for all the many blessings you give us each and every day of our lives. We thank you for Jesus, who loved us so much that he willingly gave his life shed his blood upon that cruel cross for our sins we know father that we often sin and fall short of, of what we should be and we ask you father that we might repent of these things that we might be forgiven father we pray for the church we pray father that we might spread your word throughout this community that the church might grow that many might hear your word and obey we pray father for the sick all those of our brethren especially we want to remember kevin mckenzie we pray for him and his caregivers that they might know the best things to do for him to restore him to his health would be thy will pray for others father that were mentioned this morning that are on our sick list we ask you to be with each of them as as you know their needs we thank you, Father, for those that are recovering from their different illnesses, and we pray, Father, that that might continue. Father, we pray for our nation. We thank you, Father, for the freedoms we enjoy here in this, in this nation. We pray for our government and for our leaders that you might give them guidance, Father, in the things they do and the laws they make that we might ever be free to worship you as we do now we ask you father to be with <clears throat> with those that are working in foreign fields that you might keep them safe that your word might spread that many might hear and obey before it's everlasting too late in their lives we ask you father to be with scott this evening as he brings a lesson to us that you'll give him a ready remembrance of the things he wants to to say that we might all gain knowledge of your word and know better how to serve you. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name, and amen. Our invitation song this evening after Brother Scott's lesson is number 207. If you'd like to mark it in your books, 207, let him have his way with thee. <clears throat> the song before the lesson is not going to be on the screen, so you're going to have to use a book. And it's number 683, I Cannot Find the Way Alone. <clears throat> As I journey through this vale of sorrows, the way seems so strange and unknown. Lord, I need a helping hand to borrow, for I cannot find the way.
Good evening. Good to see you out this evening. I trust everyone had a good day. Had a good meal after services this morning. Some maybe grilled out or maybe you're saving that for tomorrow. We went to the Long John Silvers out in South Charleston. Tell you what, it's been a while since I've been there, probably 20 or 30 pounds ago. Um, Because when I sat in that booth, (laughs) it was hard to get my food in. Um, It was tough. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, it was a good day. I appreciate y'all being back. You know, a lot of times we sing the song, Victory in Jesus. And uh, that's exactly what it is. If we have Jesus in our lives, we have victory. Now, most of us are probably familiar with the brand of clothing, the brand of shoes named Nike. But I would say that very few of us have not had some sort of Nike apparel, some shoes, maybe a a hat or socks or a headband or something with the word Nike on it. The Nike company has had some really good public relations moves in its history. Now, it's had some bad ones, but it's had some really good ones. And, and, And the best one is the name itself. You see, the word Nike is the name of the Greek goddess of victory. Nike is known worldwide, and and people relate it to victory. Now, the next best PR move was probably when Nike began to use the slogan, Just Do It. It was a phrase in an ad campaign in in 1988, and the company would go on to to use popular sports figures to promote a a personal greatness and, and success, and it worked. It worked very well for them. And the reason it worked is because people like to be motivated to do things, and they like to be motivated by people who have done great things. Now, Nike, which means victory, plus the just do it phrase, made people feel that they could achieve victory by buying Nike products. And that's exactly what happened. So this evening, I want to talk a little bit about victory. I want to talk about a victory that was won in the Bible because someone decided to just do it. So if you will, turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17. This is going to be a very well-known passage to all of us, so very well-known account. We will begin in verse 17. 1 Samuel 17, 17. And Jesse said to David his son, Take for your brothers an ephah of parched grain and then these ten loaves and Carry them quickly to the camp to see your brothers. Also take these ten cheeses to the commander of their thousand. See if your brothers are well and bring them a token from me. From, bring me a token from them. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose early in the morning and he left the sheep with a keeper and he took the provisions and he went. And just as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the encampment as the host was going out to the battle line, shouting the war cry. So here we have young David. He was a shepherd boy. He was the youngest of of Jesse's sons. And Jesse wanted him to go make sure that his brothers who were out fighting uh, the Philistines with, with Saul were okay that they had the food that they needed, and that uh, they were all still alive. So that's, he asked to, for him to bring a token so he would, he would know that. And, and Jesse was just worried and concerned about his sons and that they had enough to eat. So let's continue in verse 21. And Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. And David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the ranks and, and went and greeted his brother. As he talked with him, behold, the champion of the Philistines, Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before, and and David heard them. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And the king will enrich the man who kills him with great riches. And will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. So as Israel was fighting the Philistines, Goliath appears. We, we know about Goliath, the, the giant, the, the large man who was bigger than life to most people. And of course the soldiers see him and, and they run. They run away. 
So in order to get them back and in order to encourage them to continue to fight the Philistines, King Saul makes an offer to the one who kills Goliath. The man who did so would receive the king's daughter as his wife and his family would be free in Israel. And so that was a little bit of a, a motivator. Continuing in verse 26, And David said to the men who stood by him, What shall be done for this man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of a living God? And the people answered him in the same way, So shall it be done to the man who kills him. Now, now imagine young David. Here all his brothers are out fighting a war and, and, and he's back, back at the home place and they don't have the news, they don't have radio or television or the internet to, to get live pictures of, of the stones flying through the air and hitting certain things. So his mind's got to be racing, what's going on over there? What are, what are they doing in the valley? And, and then all of a sudden his dad says, here, take these things to him. I get to go, I get to go, I get to go. That's what David's thinking. I get to go and be a part of this action. I get to go and I get to see what's going on. And so he gets there, he delivers the goods, and he's hearing a little bit about this big Philistine. And he says, now wait a minute. So you're telling me that there's a reward for the person who kills Goliath? Now David must have been pretty impressed with this reward. He even asked about it and asked the people about it after he asked the soldiers just to make sure. And, and then he brings God into the picture, which no one has done yet. And, and, and he says, who is this non-believer who attempts to defy the armies of a living God? Which probably made everybody think, including his brother. Let's continue in verse 28. Now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. Now imagine a big brother being upset with a little brother. Does that not happen all the time? Does that not happen today? Well, get out of my stuff. Get out of my business. And he said, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your presumption and the evil of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David's like, yeah, I have. At least that's what he's thinking. And David said, what have I done now? How many times? Have, well, what did I do now? You know, you, you, you hear one of your kids yell at the other one, Declan, Declan what have I done now? Well, he's doing so much most of the time. He, he doesn't really know. But he said, was it not a word? In other words, did I just say something? I haven't done anything. Verse 30, and he turned away from him toward another and spoke in the same way, and the people answered him as before. So David pretty much blows off his big brother, and he wants to know more about Goliath. He wants to know more about this reward that is being offered. Even though Eliab, David's oldest brother, gets on him for just talking about it. He's a little angry with David. He realizes that David seems to be putting his nose in the business that he doesn't belong in. And he sees that David just wanted to be a little part of the action, which is normal. And he's thinking, this sneaky kid, he got his way down here just so he could get in and, and see. And David says, I just asked a question. He got the same answer as that question before. Let's continue in verse 31. When the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul. And he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight the Philistine. And Saul said to David, You're not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. You are but a youth. And he, talking about Goliath, has been a man of war since his youth or from his youth. So he's saying, you've got a very well-trained big man here that you're wanting to go against. You are a youth. He's been training since he was your age, and he is older now. Saul's basically saying, there is no way you're going to go out and win. Saul likes David's courage. He, he wants to talk to David. And David tells Saul not to worry that he's going to take care of Goliath. But Saul doesn't think that he can do it. 
But as young, confident folks do, David began trying to convince Saul otherwise. Verse 34, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if there arose against me, and if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and I struck him and I killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the, the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. How often, which is the way it should be, but how often are there times in our lives when we've got something going on and, and we're trying to figure out how to fix them? Do we try to do it on our own? We, we, we try to figure out all of life's problems on our own? And then somebody says, well, have you tried God? Have you asked God for help? And then a light bulb comes on and we realize, you know, that is right. He has done so much for me before. Why did I not go to him first? And that's what David does to Saul here. David reminds him of all the times that, that God has seen him through situations. And he says he's going to do the same thing here. And Saul goes, wow, this young man hit the nail on the head. David, David told him about all the past victory, victories that he had and, and that he's a little tougher than what you might think for being a, a young shepherd boy. But, but he doesn't stop short of telling Saul that he gets his strength from God. So Saul relents and he allow, allows David to fight Goliath. Verse 38. Then Saul clothed him with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of, of, of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor. And he tried in vain, uselessly, to go. For he had not tested them. And then David said to Saul, I cannot go, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. And he took his staff in his hand and five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand and he approached the Philistine. So here Saul, of course, in an attempt to help, gives David his own armor. David tries it on, but it's a little too big. And as we've probably found out in our lives, things that are too big that we put on our body kind of hinder us from doing the right thing. Imagine walking around in, in armor. So David explains that it's best that he doesn't use the armor since he hasn't really had a time to practice with it, to test it. So he doesn't want to use it in case that it might hinder him. So he takes off the armor and he picks up these five stones uh, for use with his sling and, and he goes on out and he goes to face Goliath with a sling, a staff, and stones. Verse 41. And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you have come to me with sticks. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the fields. So here's Goliath. He sees David, this young man, closing in on him, and, and he discounts him. He ridicules him he, as being um, someone who was good looking and handsome and, and a nice blushing face and he, he just he simply makes fun of him and, and uh, he says have, have you come to have you come to basically play fetch with me have you come to stave me off with a stick like I'm a dog but David says think what you will I'm going to kill you in verse 45 then David said to the Philistine you come to me 
with a sword and a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And that all the assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he, will, and he will give you into our hands. So David says, you can bring all the weapons that you want to this fight, but I'm going to win because I have God on my side. And notice that David never fails to give God the credit. Goliath here is all about himself. You come against me, you little man. And David says, I come because God is here. It's not me that's going to kill you. It is God that will deliver you to me. Verse 48, when the Philistine arose and he came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in the bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into the forehead And he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and he took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. So When nobody else would go because they were scared, David decides to just do it. David didn't stand around thinking about it. He didn't let his older brother talk him out of it. David knew that the Lord required a victory and that the Lord would give victory. So he just went out and did it. He was victorious. Now, he wasn't victorious because he had the best Nike sling that money could buy or that he had the best Nike stones that money could buy or the best Nike sandals that money could buy. He did it because God was with him, because he had God in his life and he was willing to go to work for the Lord. And we, too, can have this type of Nike, this type of victory. However, we've got to have faith in God that he is going to help us through life, that he's going to help us win. Just do it. Don't sit around talking about doing it. Just do it, and God will be there. Get things done with the help of God. Now, the fact is, it's, it's not as hard to do God's will as we sometimes think or want to think or, or are led to think. Oftentimes, we're afraid to do things because we might fail. We might lose, and nobody likes to lose. Now, with most of us, well, me in particular, I'm a Republican. I, I like West Virginia sports, and I'm a member of the Church of Christ. Everybody's always against us, and sometimes they seem to win. But, When it comes to knowing that God is with you, those minor setbacks that are producing a greater, much better eternal life for us are easy to get through. Hindsight, we might say, is 2020. So when we are concerned that it might be too hard or or would be a burden on us if, if we were to do this or that, let's remember what John reminds us of in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 1 beginning. It says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. 
By this we know that we are the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Now listen. And his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? God's commandments are not burdensome. The only way they are burdensome if, is if we let them become burdensome or if we look at them as burdensome. God would not give us something that we could not do. He would not charge us with something that we can't fulfill. Our God is not like that. And our God is there when we pray, unlike the gods of Goliath, unlike the gods of Baal. Our God is there and he listens to us because he wants us to be victorious. And he tells us that we can have victory in Jesus but it's not just going to come to us. We've got to just do it. We've got to go find that. We've got to understand that upon hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the fact that he was on this earth, that he was killed on a cross, he hung there, he was buried and on the third day arose in his heaven, is in heaven waiting on us. We've got to understand and believe that. And when we do, we will, we will want to change. We will change and turn from sin, repenting, confessing our faith in Jesus and being baptized for the forgiveness of sins, becoming a Christian, which is the ultimate victory in Jesus, arising to walk a new, in a new life, taking God's commands, fulfilling them on our way to heaven. If you're not a Christian, don't wait till it's too late. If you're one who has fallen away, Come back before it's too late. If we can help you in any way, come at any time. But if you'd like, you can come forward as we stand to sing. Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with him with things that never broke? Would you have him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let him have his way.
Is there anyone in the, uh, please be seated. We have the opportunity at this time to partake of the Lord's Supper for those that, who were not able to do so this, this morning. So as we, as we uh, partake of these emblems, let us void our minds of the things of the world and let us center our mind upon that great sacrifice that Christ did make so as to set men free. So let us, as we partake of this bread, remember his body on the cross. Let us pray. Father, we're so very thankful unto thee for that body that was, that was given on the cross that we could become sons of thine and could become free, free of the sinfulness that is in this world. As we partake of this bread, Father, we ask that thou would bless it and bless those that partake of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Our Father, as we continue this, this memorial uh, a feast, we're thankful for that blood that was shed there on the cross. We're thankful, Father, that thou did, did uh, supply a way for us to, to become sons of thine. We're thankful for the atonement that was in that blood. And as we partake of this emblem that represents that blood. We ask thee to bless those that partake of it. In Jesus' name, amen. And again, we are also afforded an opportunity to give back unto the Lord what he has a portion of that of what he has blessed us with. And so we, at this time, we'll take that opportunity to do that. You can, uh, you can leave your offering in either the baskets in the back or up here in the front. And um, so let us go to God in prayer. Father, we're so very thankful unto thee for the, for the blessings of life thou dost bestow upon us. And we're blessed so richly by thee and uh, only the Father can, can give us our needs, and we're so very thankful for that. And as we give back unto thee a portion of that which thou hast blessed us with, we ask, ask thee to bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, uh, before we close, I'd like to remind everyone to remember the, um, the um, gospel meeting that we're having August 5th and 6th and to pray for it, that it will bring forth the fruit uh, that we and God desires. And um, also to remember to pray for those that are on our sick list. They need our prayers so very bad. At this time, Brother Kevin will come forward and, and uh, give us the uh, closing prayer. Let us all stand, please. <clears throat> I just wanted to point out that uh, my doctor called me Friday morning and uh, my ultrasound went okay, but there is a couple of mild concerns he had, but he said he would address those after the iron infusions were done. So just wanted to let y'all know what was going on. Can you continue to keep me in your thoughts and prayers? Thank you. Let us bow as we were dismissed. Most kind and loving Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this beautiful Lord's Day that you've given unto us. We're thankful for our health today that we were allowed to come here to worship you, true living God in spirit and in truth. 
We're thankful for, the, for thy son Jesus who went to the old rugged cross suffering such agony and shame and pain shedding his blood so that we could have our sins forgiven have a hope of eternal life with you in heaven when our life is over. At this time as we go to our separate homes and places of abode dear Lord be with us be with all those that are traveling this holiday weekend. We're mindful at this time of those men and women in uniform, every first responder, every policeman, all our armed forces that fight to protect our freedom that we cherish so dearly. Three days ago in Prestonsburg, Kentucky, three people, three policemen lost their life answering to a call. We know this is going on so rapidly in our society today. We ask you to be with the family of these men. Be with them and ease their pain and suffering. Continue to be also with those that in Uvalde, Texas. What a horrible tragedy this was. But help us to continue to pray for these families that are trying to survive this and the unimaginable heartbreak that they're going through that no doubt there's no way we can understand. But you understand it all, Lord, and you're in control of it all. And someday we will understand it all by and by. Go with us, protect us, until we meet again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.